Hi, this is Dr. Rohit Punga and I welcome you all to the Zanats Coffee Tutorials in Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. Today's topic is the maxillary nerve block. So let's go ahead and enjoy this one. So today's discussion is on the maxillary nerve block. Now maxillary nerve block is going to anesthetize the entire maxilla here and the advantage is that just a single nerve block is able to anesthetize the entire maxilla. Now you know that uh, as, as, a, as different segments the maxilla has different uh, parts that is the uh, as far as the nerves are concerned you have the anterior superior alveolar nerve supplying the anteriors you have the middle superior supplying the premolars you have the posterior superior supplying the molars and uh, along with that you have the uh, supply to the palatal aspect from the greater palatine. So we are aware that uh, all these uh, are important uh, different nerves but if we are able to practice the maxillary nerve block which is not very regularly practiced actually. So the advantage is that you can actually have the entire maxilla anesthetized with this just single nerve block. So in case you want to perform a surgery especially like the Cardwell loop procedure or anything in the maxillary sinus if you want to do extensive surgery multiple implantology you want to do uh, you know procedures on the maxilla which are going to be distributed over different uh, you know uh, regions of nerve supply of different branches so instead of going for different different uh, nerve blocks you can just go and perform this maxillary nerve block successfully the maxillary nerve block is usually used uh, for uh, you know there are three techniques three approaches to the maxillary nerve block uh, one is the extra oral approach which we are keeping aside for the time being and uh, here today's technique is going to focus on the uh, high tuberosity block the high tuberosity block is uh, what is practiced as a uh, further extension of the posterior superior alveolar nerve block. Now if you see that the posterior superior alveolar nerve block is a uh, one important block which anesthetizes the posterior maxillary teeth because it is going to anesthetize the nerve before it enters the posterior superior alveolar foramen. But what we also need to understand is that if we go further into the uh, you know the posterior lateral aspect of the maxilla we land up entering the pterygomaxillary fissure. Now the pterygomaxillary fissure is an important gateway or a pathway to the pterygopalatine fossa which hosts the pterygopalatine ganglion. This pterygopalatine ganglion is very intimately connected with the maxillary nerve and most of the branches of the maxillary nerve are going to come out from the pterygomaxillary uh, the pterygopalatine ganglion. So what happens exactly is that when you have the uh, you know foramen rotundum here that is the foramen uh, rotundum uh, here right uh, just beneath the entry of the superior orbital fissure there is the foramen rotundum and this foramen rotundum is going to be a pathway which is going to lead to the pterygopalatine fossa. Now this pterygopalatine fossa here is uh, going to host the pterygopalatine ganglion through which that maxillary nerve is which is passing out of rotundum is going to relay and from there it is going to go further into the orbit. So from there it's going to come out into the floor of the orbit here. Uh, into the infraorbital uh, fissure region. Now when it comes out into the infraorbital fissure region uh, you know this area if you can reach this area the advantage is that uh, we will be able to block the nerve and all its branches before it is exiting out. So we are going proximal to the uh, you know branches in the floor of the orbit we are going proximal to the posterior superior alveolar nerve and we are blocking the nerve in such a position that all these branches that is the greater palatine you the uh, you know the nasal the palatine the orbital the zygomatic in fact the zygomatic branches also branch out when the nerve is in the infraorbital canal from there it comes out as zygomatico temporal and zygomatico facial nerve and before it's exited from the infraorbital uh, foramen here it will also block the uh, anterior superior alveolar as, uh, as well as the middle superior alveolar nerves because you are going to give a injection right here proximal to all these nerves. So what is the technique to reach here is that you ask the patient to uh, not open the mouth too wide so that the cheek can be retracted and I would uh, suggest that it's better to keep the cheek retracted with a uh, instrument rather than your finger because if you use your finger to retract the cheek the finger in itself acts as an impedance or a hindrance to the uh, comfortable passage of the syringe which needs to reach at a particular 45 degree angle here because if you carefully observe the posterior lateral surface of the maxilla it's at an acute bend from the surface of the maxilla the external surface of the maxilla which is anterior to the uh, zygomatico maxillary buttress. So after it goes behind the zygomatico maxillary buttress which is one of the significant landmarks for this nerve block so behind this your needle needs to curve around and turn around this along the surface so that you can reach this region. Now for this it's important 
like here if you want to go so it's important that your cheek is well retracted because otherwise your syringe will not have any place to go inside because this is a relatively posterior region so i would suggest you retract the cheek with either a cheek retractor or at least a mouth mirror so that that does not occupy much of the space and your syringe has comfortable area to go inside in the desired angulation because if you do not go in the desired angulation you may land up going posteriorly and hitting the lateral aspect of the pterygoid plate this is the lateral aspect of the pterygoid plate the pterygoid plate which is the process of the sphenoid bone here so it may land up hitting on the lateral aspect there and your entire solution may be deposited here in the infratemporal region only and some part may although seep in because of the medial push of the syringe and the medial deposition of the solution but that may not successfully give you a complete maxillary nerve block and you may still have spotty anesthesia or maybe partial anesthesia so although the posterior superior alveolar nerve may be anesthetized in such a situation the anterior and the middle superior alveolar nerves are still at stake and so is the greater palatine nerve so it's important that you do not hit this and you rather enter the gateway to this pterygomaxillary fissure which as I said is a gateway to the pterygomaxillary fossa and the ganglion here. Also if you go to a shot of this again you may land up hitting the posterior lateral aspect of the maxilla and you may have some mild hindrance. So it's important to keep the syringe in the correct angulation and take it at the height of the distal aspect of the second molar. You penetrate the area of penetration or the area of insertion of the needle is at the height of the distal aspect of the root of the second molar the mucobuccal fold thereof you have to insert the needle into the mucobuccal fold at this point and then you have to keep your needle medially directed so much so that it reaches the pterygomaxillary fissure in this region now it's interesting to note that when you are going inside from this point of insertion at the height of the a mucobuccal fold at the second molar the distal aspect of the second molar rather the height of the injection or the depth of penetration uh, of the needle rather would be 30 mm this is approximately double in that of the uh, posterior superior alveolar nerve block which only requires 16 mm of needle insertion at this point so that clearly tells us that how far we have to go to give this block and therefore we always prefer a uh, you know a long needle and this short needle which is here it will, will fall short of the length you can see that if i go from here at the height i will not be able to reach with the short needle whereas if because this is not even 25 mm as length so we need to go nearly uh, you know 30 mm of this so that you are able to reach the desired area to successfully administer this nerve block. So once you are given this nerve block, your entire maxilla, the posterior lateral surface, the anterior surface and the, all the teeth along with the palate will be anesthetized and you can comfortably perform procedures in the posterior or the anterior region and any kind of minor surgery which is in overlapping areas can be comfortably performed. So this usually takes around 2 to 3 minutes for the uh, you know, nerve block anesthesia to uh, uh, get the objective and the subjective uh, signs and symptoms so you will achieve good anesthesia uh, of course pulpal anesthesia will take a little longer time and you must wait as in all other nerve blocks but uh, the subjective and uh, the objective uh, symptoms and signs will be achieved within two to three minutes and uh, you can start your soft tissue procedures immediately after that so of course for pulpal anesthesia you need to wait for a couple of more minutes so that uh, you are uh, sure that the, uh, you know you have sufficient pulpal anesthesia also and then you can maybe perform all the dental procedures that you need to perform in this region after giving this uh, nerve block. So uh, an important complication which you may land up is because you are using a long needle and you are going too deep. So in case your angulation is not correct, in case your angulation is directed a little more posteriorly from this point, so what will happen is that you may land up giving an uh, injection into this region which contains the pterygoid plexus of veins and you know that the pterygoid plexus of veins is a you know richly vascular area it can hold up to 400 ml of blood and is also known as the peripheral heart of the body so this region can develop a huge hematoma if you are with a long needle and you go a little posteriorly uh, and do not direct your middle, uh, needle completely medially properly so that can be one important complication which you can land up with the maxillary nerve block in the high tuberosity technique so my advice is that if you give your posterior superior alveolar nerve block regularly then you can practice this technique in your uh, patients but if you have uh, not mastered the posterior superior alveolar nerve block I would recommend that you wait before you get good mastery over the PSA nerve block and then you proceed with the high tuberosity technique which is a fantastic armamentarium in the uh, you know uh, our uh, tools of local anesthetic administration so uh, with this uh, I think uh, I would end this small uh, tutorial on the uh, maxillary nerve block and in the next one we'll learn about the maxillary nerve block 
through the uh, pterygoid, uh, the uh, greater palatine approach. So that's the that's the second way that you can block this nerve. So uh, thanks so much.